So for me, being ordained as a priest today, it has meant that, that I fulfill the calling that God has called me to. For my congregation, they'll suddenly, they, they see it as, oh, Sharon can now do Holy Communion. She can now do blessings. She can now do um, weddings and um, listen to, listen and, and do, our, do the confession and the absolution. So my congregation see it very much as a, more of a practical thing. Whereas for me, I see it more as fulfilling what God has called me to. It is about my calling story, um, where I've come from. Um, because as a small child, I always wanted to be a nurse. I was the one who had, you know, the, the little white apron and the little plastic watch. And then as a teenager, I joined St John Ambulance and loved the caring side of it. So at 18, I went off to do nursing. And during my training, I spent four weeks at Bridge North Maternity Unit and we slept in, we, we stayed there actually in the unit for those four weeks. And so we would, a little knock would come on our door in the middle of the night and they would say, come, come and watch a baby being born. So that was where I really caught the bug for midwifery because it, it really inspired me seeing this new life coming into the world. It was just absolutely amazing and to be involved with that intimate moment for that mother um, and her baby was just wow. So once I'd qualified as a nurse, I, I staffed for a while on orthopaedics and then applied to do my midwifery and I was accepted in Shrewsbury and that was back in 1990, 1990. and um, I, so I worked all around Shropshire um, doing midwifery, I worked in Telford on community, I worked on the labour ward at Shrewsbury and, and I was having a really enjoying my career. I was promoted to sister and I became in charge of the outpatient department and then I had this real passion for women who were high risk, women who'd um, had real problems perhaps getting pregnant, women who perhaps were having real problems remaining pregnant and also women who pregnancy had brought up an unexpected um, problem. For instance, um, I cared for women who were HIV positive or hepatitis B positive or had sickle cell and, and I, I got a real passion for caring for those women so I then became the antenatal and newborn screening coordinator in Shropshire. Then 2009 I was seconded to the West Midlands region as a project midwife to support the team in antenatal and newborn screening and, and ended up traveling all around the region, um, going to hospitals, helping them with their programs, helping them set up new programs, improve things um, and, and all the rest of it. And then in, just before I had my call to ordination, I then became um, more involved regionally and um, was, was looking at applying for promotion with, within the region um, to, to become what was called then a quality assurance um, midwife, which sounds a bit of a grand title, but basically it meant supporting midwives um, to provide good quality maternity services in the antenatal and newborn screening arena. In, a, in about 2005, um, my husband and I were sat perfectly happy in the pews, perfectly happily in the pews. And this person came up to me and said, um, we really think you should get involved with youth work. And I said, what, me? I'd never done any youth work before in my life. And all of a sudden we were thrown into this arena where we were looking after a, a group of teenagers, 11 to 13s as well. And suddenly we were involved in their spiritual discipleship. And that completely blew my mind and I really enjoyed doing that and to be perfectly honest I thought I just would carry on doing that and then you know God threw me this curveball about being called to ordination and it was completely out of the blue for me I wasn't expecting it and I guess as somebody in my middle 40s I thought I'd got my you know my life sorted really you know I was perfectly happy so, to, so for God to call me it was just amazing and the thought didn't go away and I think that's the thing I would really want to emphasize is that if it's a thought that's in my head I know it'll go away but 
God keeps on. If he's calling you to ministry, then he keeps on telling you about it. He keeps putting people in your path who will talk to you about it. Um, and I got so many stories where people did confirm that during the desert desertion process did confirm that in me that actually I was called to priesthood. So like I said it was it was like a woodpecker on the back of my head and for instance I was in a really um, boring meeting um, at work but they were discussing some really important issues and suddenly I heard this in my voice in, in my head saying but Sharon you won't be here when that happens. You, you'll have already gone. You, you won't be involved in that particular project because you won't be here. And I thought, hold on a minute, where, where did that come from? And then our, our youth group were having, um, were being confirmed and we had about seven or eight candidates. And Bishop Mark said at the end of the service, have you thought about ordination? So that was a bit of a, a, a kind of a, again a bolt from the blue for me and that I think it was when Mark said it to me that I thought oh my goodness I really probably need to do something about this and then I also had a, a non-Christian boss who gave me a picture that was very similar to a picture that a Christian friend had given me and so all these things started to build up and and I knew then that I really needed to follow God's calling in my life rather than just thinking about it. It's, it's, it's people. people. People are the things that really inspire me. Um, and conversations, having conversations with people and being with people. And sometimes, you know, if somebody's really poorly, it's just about being there. You don't have to say any words. It's just about being there and them knowing that 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 you just being there is, is, is enough. And, and I guess that's one of the privileges of, of, of um, priestly ministry is that we are, we are allowed to be in those places that perhaps a lot of people aren't, don't get to go to. You know, sit, sitting at the bedside of, of somebody who is about to take their last breath is such a privilege. It's, and being able to pray with them and and help them through that process. I can't really put it into words. It's it's just an amazing privilege. And then you know, baptizing babies. I mean, for me, for me as an ex midwife, I'm very used to holding small babies. Very used to, to caring for them and helping new parents learn how to look at their baby and count figures and toes. But being able to be, being able to baptize a, a, a child or a small a, a little one. It's a real privilege being involved in that. Again, that's such an intimate part of, of, of life. And, and holding that baby and, and, and soaking the head three times. It's, it's something I think that, that I'll, never, I'll never get used to, if that makes sense. Like, it'll never become normal because it's, it, it just, it's just like, it's adding to the next thing, you know? Yes, I've delivered babies, and this is the next thing I can do, is I can baptize them. And then I can see them grow up in our church and disciple them. And so that's, yeah, that's really important.